Okay. So today we're just gonna do some more um, modeling, just uh, just to go over some basics and um, and how we're gonna do that is we're gonna do that with um, with the sword. So we'll we'll model the sword in class. I'll show you uh, my approach to it, and we'll take it from there. All right. So first things first, we're going to need our reference image in Maya. So um, I'm going to go into my orthographic view. So spacebar, go to view, image plane, and just import my image. Go to desktop. Sword and load that in. All right. So we have our sword in here. I know some of you guys have uh, said that you guys have had issues with uh, the modeling. Uh, what kind of issues have you guys had so far? Uh, anyone? At least, for me, at least for me, I don't know how to start. I don't know where uh, to start. Okay. I tried polygon but for some reason my lights weren't working right with it it kept giving blacks every time and never gave me the actual you know the brownish color so i thought uh, up and yeah used, and once i started using the cube then i and i cut it in half then i didn't have that problem anymore yeah when you when you use the let's just say we're using the polygon draw tool then yeah you're gonna you're gonna have issues because you're only drawing one plane you're drawing a single plane and sometimes uh, when you do that when you just draw a single plane usually the other side is going to be black okay because I know yeah. one thing you need to do was turn on uh, in the lights there was a yeah you can you can also if that's distracting for you you can always turn on uh, two-sided lighting yeah that was and that yeah so but not for long yeah, you could you could do that. That's fine. It just it does get distracting when the other side is just uh, black, the back of the face. Okay. Uh, so I figure it out, so I gave up. <laughs> no, it's okay. Usually you can start uh, modeling. You can start modeling um, uh, with a single plane. Uh, you can also start with a cube, which is fine. But for me, um, because I have the, the side view here, um, I, I would rather just kind of build the profile of it and then kind of shape it the way I think it would look like in, uh, in 3D, right? Yeah. Uh, for me, you could, you could always start, you could start with, um, like this, you could always start with the, uh, where is it? You could always start with uh, a pyramid for this shape and then kind of just split it in the middle and bring it up. So just to show you that real quick. So you could always build a pyramid. It's at the center. So we can move this over. You kind of, it's kind of just like um, when they do like uh, 2D drawings they always uh, build the character uh, with shapes. You know how, if you ever seen those, how to draw the Simpsons, they always start with like uh, a big donut or something for a stomach and then, and then the elliptical. So it's kind of similar. You just start with the basic shapes of the, of the, of the, of the thing you're modeling. And then you could always add the detail after. So I'm just gonna use, you can scale these down. And we're just gonna move that. So when we look into our perspective view, you can see it looks kind of, it looks kind of funky. Uh, if we just turn off image planes. So you can see it kind of looks funky because a, we don't have, uh, 
even though this is a quad, because, because we've pushed out the sides, it, it would be nice to, uh, if we go um, shift right click and go multi-cut, sorry, shift right multi-cut, and then just cut that, cut that in the middle. It's, it's really hard to, let's say, if you were to leave it like this, you could see where the polygon really wants to cut. It really wants to cut like vertically, see? It wants to keep this shape, but we don't really need this shape because we actually see that it's pushed in. So that's why I like to just, uh, I would just split it like this. And then even after this, we can we can worry about uh, what to do next. It's a very crude shape, so it's not too much detail on it. Yeah, we can see like a little bevel and stuff like that, but we can do that after. It's just getting the generic shape out of this uh, initial shape first. And the next shape is technically the same as the bigger one. It's just scaled up. So for that, what we could do is we could use uh, a cube. Let's just bring that, slide that cube over. It's a little too big. So if we see in our side view here, let's just zoom in here in our side view. We can scale it down until we get the outer profile correct. We'll slide it over. And you can see Okay, we have our cube, but we don't really have our center center line because it is it is tapering down. So if we started to do that, it wouldn't really do anything. So if we what we should really do is go into our like inputs for our cube, and if we split, I think it's on no, not on the width, on the height. So now if we select the outer vertices and just slide them down, you can see we're starting to get that shape. So if we do that and slide it just to match, uh, kind, of, kind of keeping everything even between this shape, uh, the outer shape and the inner shape here. And then we can just drag select everything. So when we look in our perspective, we've actually got everything selected. And then when we go here, we can just move it in. And there, maybe this is too, too far in, we can deselect that. And we can bring this out a little bit like that. And then honestly, all we would do is uh, do uh, control D to duplicate. And we can just kind of put this in the center and we can just scale this bad boy up, scale it up. Uh, maybe grab both ends, fix the profile, deselect the first ones, select the one in the middle and just bring it out just to match the outer profile. There you go. So when we go into shaded mode, you can see we're starting to get we're starting to get our shapes. But if we go to our perspective view, you see it looks a little wonky. So you can see because all we did was really we took this and we moved it over and we scaled it. So it scaled it in X also. So let's see, to me, I don't feel like um, this would be thicker than, than this in, in the perspective view. Maybe it will be thicker a little bit, but maybe not as much. And the way we can find out how thick this should be is by doing the cylinder next, because that's going to be the grip and the cylinder is going to be symmetrical all the way around. So we're going to know, how thick the grip is going to be. So if we do the grip next, 
So if we build a cylinder, we're going to rotate it 90 degrees in X just to put it on its side. We'll slide it over. We'll go back into our side view and we're just scale it down even uh, uniformly using the center. And then we're just going to match the outline. And then when we go out here, we can see, okay, that is the thickness of our grip. So what does that look like? Does that look too thick? Whoops. Does that, whoop, one at a time, Phil. Does that look too thick? If we were, if we were to do proportions, what do you guys think? A little bit? No? It looks okay? It looks, looks fine. Too thick. A little too thick? For me, it's a little, it's a little too thick. I'll, I think I'll bring it, I think I want to bring it in to the, um, the depth of this. So I'll try to, try to, it, it, because A, we don't have any other views of this sword. So you're kind of left uh, aesthetically to kind of figure out the rest yourself. So, and sometimes art direction will only give you one picture and you model the sword and you have a little bit of uh, liberties with it. And then as soon as you do like a little mini uh, gray turntable, um, they'll be like, oh, okay. Now that we see it in 3D, I wish this was like fatter or skinnier or, or more tapered. And then, and then you'll get more into notes with that. For me, this, this looks straight, but I don't know. So what I would like to do, just so aesthetically not everything is looking so boxy, maybe if I selected this, these outer sections here and, oops, and I, I, I tapered it in, okay? I tapered it in to match the profile to this section. And then for this one, or maybe even this, this could be too much. So let's say I select these two outer ones and I bring it in a little bit like that. So it could be like that. It's it's all like up to you guys to to kind of build something aesthetically pleasing. And for me, um, if I go to my top view, I wish I'm starting to build things like um, on a on an angle. I want it to go outwards. So you don't want everything to look like a box. So I'm trying to aesthetically, I know a sword will start from a point and it will taper to, to the widest part. And then A, you'll get a grip. And on the other end, you'll kind of you'll kind of do the same thing. So if I was just to build a cube and bring this over. So what I mean is you're always going to start with, with A, let's say the point and you're gonna start going outwards. So you can even create this kind of stuff for yourself to, guide, to give you guys like a visual reference. Oh, okay, so maybe I want, let's say I select uh, the outer ones here and I want to bring it in to, to line up with this, right? So something like that. And maybe I'll do that with the outer ones too. Bring it in just a little bit. And with this one, oops, the big cube is in the way. So I'll stay in wireframe just cause I can't really work. I'm just using this as a guide for the for the, uh, the top profile. And I'll just bring that out a little bit just to kind of match. 
So there you go. So I've kind of used this crude shape to give me my profile, the, my top profile. I already have my side profile from the image. So now if I just, I'll just take this uh, crude shape here and I'll just put it in a layer and I can always just turn that off and I can just say uh, top uh, ref uh, top profile ref reference just so I know what it is. Okay. Something simple like that. We go to the side. So your next question would be like, well, sir, how do we, how do we start connecting all this now? Right? So a, you could, uh, since we built these, you can, you can also keep these as your reference or just start trying to uh, merge them. So we know we're going to need a little gap in between in, in between here and here. So the worst one or the hardest one for me will be going from the, the pyramid shape to the, the flatter rectangular shape. So the best job, the best thing I could do right now is let's say I take all of these, I'll put it in a layer and I'm just going to put a template. So you have visibility on off this P I don't really know what it means. I kind of just leave it as is. If one of you guys knows what it does, I, I haven't really bothered. It wasn't there in the earlier Mayas that I used to use. I never really figured out what it does. I know sometimes if you turn it off, things won't render. But uh, the next thing you want is this. So this is your template. So you'll get you'll get a gray outline of your geometry and your it templates it so you can't select it. And then if you click again, you'll get this R. What the R means is reference. So you'll 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 be able to you'll be able to see the shaded view, but again, you won't be able to select it. And then the, if you click again, it's just off. So we're just going to put it on template mode. I want to change my background color because this gray on gray is not working for me. I can't really uh, tell the difference. So to change your background, all you have to do is hit uh, Alt and B, and that will cycle your viewport background color. I kind of stick with this uh, turquoise or blue gradient. That's what I like to use. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to see how I can get an extrusion from here to here to match this shape. So what I'm going to need is What I can do is, I guess I can go, I guess what I can do is turn this on. Maybe if I select uh, these two, and um, let's see if I can, I'm going to isolate select. So I'm just showing these two, and I'm going to change it to front view. So space bar, click on top of uh, the Maya logo, just left click and then you'll be able to change your views here and just go to front. So now we can kind of see, we can see the, our end piece and our next piece. Uh, that doesn't really help me. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, that doesn't really help much. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see what I can, I think the easiest solution is I'm just going to, uh, let's see. I think the easiest solution is to uh, insert an edge loop. So I'm just going to insert an edge loop. Doesn't matter where, 
because what I'm going to do is go into the history for that poly split and I'm going to make sure right it's right in the middle. So it's almost in the middle. It's at 0.505. So I'm just going to change it to 0.5. So then, oops, I, I deleted that by accident. So I know that's right in the middle and that matches with the center of the of the triangle or the, the pyramid shape I built. And now I'm just going to figure out how much I want my extrusion to be. So let's see, I'm going to go and I'm going to hit G again to uh, do to repeat last command. Remember G uh, will let you repeat any last command that you uh, uh, activated. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put it closer to the edge. So let's say around there. I'm gonna do the same thing. Uh, actually, first, I want to see what that value is. So I'm gonna go to the poly split on the other end. So it's 0 0.703. I'm gonna change that to point, whoops, 0.7. Just a nice even number. I'm gonna hit G again. I'll just put it randomly on the other side. I know I guess, I guess we can work on one side. I guess we can just work on one side right now because we're working um, symmetrically. So let's just do that. That should be, yeah. Okay, so let's just do that because I'm going to be uh, doing both commands at the, at the same time and I don't really need to because I can just mirror the sword after. So what I'm going to do is I will go, I will, I can't delete. So if we undo isolate select and we hit it again, just on the queue, I can't really select half and hit delete because it actually deletes the face in the middle. So what I need to do is split this object down the center too, uh, in, in Y, not just X like I did earlier. So there we go. And if I just delete that, now I have half. I'll do that with this shape too. I'll just delete half of it. Whoops, missed the face. So now what I'm gonna do is I inserted where I want the extrusion to be, but because this is a diamond, so if I select this and this, and I say extrude, oh, there we go. If I say extrude, and this is another issue. You see how extrude likes to work on the normal of the face. So if I extrude, it extrudes evenly, right? But that's not what we want. So if I just undo that, and if I just hit W just to go into my transform, regular transform tool, now I can just extrude that outwards. And it's not going up in the normal direction. It's just going straight out. So as we extrude that, we see that we are getting, we're getting that depth fill in there, but here it's, it's not cut properly because it's tapered too far out. Like it's, it's extruded too far out. So the next thing we could do is we could select the two vertices on the top and we could just move them over until they go as close to the edge there as we want, as we can, we can see. So now that we did that, I just want to show you what that shape looks like. So I'm just going to turn off isolate select, which shows everything. I'm going to select what I want to isolate. I'll do that. So the shape looks like this. Okay. And this this part, it doesn't have to go straight like this. It can stay on this angle. It, uh, it doesn't really matter. It's not gonna affect the geometry too much. So now we have this. So if we isolate, select this and this, we get this shape. So now that we moved everything over, now let's just move these end pieces back until they disappear inside. So there you go. 
And if we go to our side view, go wireframe. So we can see now, if I just turn on occlusion, we can see we do have, we have the outer, we have the outer, and then we have the little depth. We have the one on the inside. But like, sir, how do we merge this now? How do we turn it into one object? Well, it's uh, this part can be done several ways. We could either Boolean it together, which means we can take two objects and combine them and make them into one using a Boolean operation, which gives us some dirty geometry. It's not really clean. I just want to I just wanted to move the center over a little bit just to kind of match the thickness all the way. Um, so if we do that, if we boolean these two together, it will join them. But then again, you can see if we join them, we're gonna we're gonna have an edge here now, and we're gonna have an edge going. Uh, if I turn on, what, um, let's see, I, basically what this button does right here, excuse me, sorry, it turns all your geometry on screen kind of x-ray transparent. Sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's annoying. So uh, for educational purposes here, I'm going to take this piece of geometry, I'm just going to duplicate it, I'm going to freeze transform. So everything is zeroed out, but, and now I can just, I'm going to move this off to the side. This is my good geometry that I'm just going to keep here for a second. And I don't need to worry about if I had values before. All I can do is I can move this out into space. I can scale it. As long as I zero out everything and change my scale back to one, it turns back to the original shape I had. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this off to the side. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete these faces here because I want to show you what's happening. Okay. This is just for educational purposes right now. So there you go. I'm just going to delete this face, this face, this. I'm just going to delete the outer face and leave that extrusion. Okay. So you can see now what's going to happen. If we merge these two pieces together, uh, we don't have an edge going across and across to to join it properly. Because if we if we had um, let's say we extruded here, if we extruded here and scaled, we have an edge here and an edge here that comes off, right? But because because these two pieces are separate, and if we if we join it, let's just join it and see what. I don't know if it'll join it because the polygon is open. It might not. So, under if we select the two pieces of geo, if we go to uh, mesh, under combine, there's a boolean operation. If we just tear that window off. There's differences of, you can do a union, you can do a difference, an intersection, and that, and that depends on all how you select, your selection order of what gets cut out or what is the cut E, you know, what is the cutter and what gets the actual object cut. So let's just select both and we're just going to join them. We want to join these two together. So if we join them, we get like a weird operator like this because it, it's a it's basically a hole. So, but you can see what it did. Uh, oh, what happened? Oh, sorry. So, what it does is, anytime you do, anytime you do a boolean, let's say we just did that again. Remember, it's just like combining and merging. It makes a new piece of geometry. And you have your history here. So when I went to undo and the object disappeared, it's because the object was a new object that wasn't isolated before. It's a little confusing. 
just Maya's isolation select kind of is a little funky. So if your object disappears, just make sure you turn off your isolate select and your object should come back. So let's say, and when I say this object is open, I mean it's not a finished polygon. It's, it's open, it, it's not a, a solid object. So you can have an open object like this where I can see the inside of it. Or if we were just to go to uh, mesh and uh, the append polygon. So we're just going to close this face and close this. So now this is a sealed piece of geometry. There's no openings anywhere. OK? There's no openings. So that's, that's a closed object. And if I deleted a, even this face, that's an open object. I can see inside of it. So basically, it's like if you were to fill this up with water or if it was filled with water and you shook it around, would it spill out or wouldn't it? And in, if in a closed object, it won't. If you have it open, it will. So let's just move this. Oh, sorry. Let's just put this back on top here. Let's just have it. And it has to intersect so slightly. OK. And even this object is open. So bullying will sometimes cause you problems. So let's see what it does here. So it does the same thing. It's booleaning. It, it's always nice to do it. It's always better to do it on a on a closed object. So let's just see what it does if I just close this uh, the pyramid here too. Uh, hold on. I'm going to select this face. So it's going to make one. I'm going to hit G. It's going to make one face. And then there you go. So now everything is closed. I'm going to isolate select again. And now I'm going to do a union. So now there you go. So that's the difference between trying to uh, merge objects together if there's no faces or if there, everything is closed. Usually a Boolean operation, you want to do it on fully closed objects. So there's no openings. That's that's the uh, that's the best time that's the only time where you're not going to get any weird errors and stuff like that if you were to do this and a face was open well maybe i think it it only matters on the face that's intersecting that's uh, going to cause you yeah it's going to cause you issues so make sure wherever the Boolean is either joining or cutting. So if I was to show you the other operator here, the difference, you'll see it gets cut out. So the problem with this is when you go to smooth it now, it looks like poo. It doesn't look good. So what do you have to do here? Any questions or any answers? Can anybody answer this? Reinforce the edges. We have to reinforce the edges. Good. So I would just insert an edge loop. And edge loops, usually when you try to insert an edge loop, it'll insert it all the way around. But because this is an open face or this is a, a, not a quad, it's not a, it's not a quad or a triangle, it can't complete the edge loop. So I kind of use that to my advantage. So instead of going to the one vertice and manually drawing all the way around, you know, I, I kind of just, I'll just undo that. I kind of just insert an edge loop and I'll put the edge loops on the complete faces. And then I can manually just go and complete them. And I can do the same thing here. So this is what I was basically trying to get get at on the other one. We're going to join them instead of uh, separating them. We're going to we're going to join them. 
and then we have to we, we have to clean up our mesh okay oops so that's what we have to do here we have to join we have to we have to take these two joined pieces now and you could see because the center here was perfectly on top of each other oops and I don't have a good thing to always have showing is if you go to your display, heads up display, your uh, poly count, you can see if the vertices got merged from the, from the union Boolean operation. So obviously these two did because it's, it only shows up as one vertice when I drag select. And on the end here, it didn't because, oh, sorry, it did. It's just, there's a little depth here. So that's okay. We can fix that later. But so now we, we have to figure out how to join uh, this. Sorry, just isolate select. We, we have to figure out how to join this around as cleanly as possible without uh, getting too weird of a shape. All right, and that's how I would do it for the rest. Uh, da, da, da. I'll just undo this. Keep going back. Come on. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. There we go. I'm back all the way. So just to recap, so once you Boolean the objects together, you're gonna have to fix any end gons or faces that are not uh, four-sided or triangles because it's gonna just give you problems later. You, you, you don't really want to just keep Booleaning and combining geometry without fixing your topology, okay? So if I put this back on top now, I'm just going to, I know this one is sticking out a little bit for some reason. So I'm just gonna go to my top view and I'm just gonna go to vertice mode and I'm just gonna drag select just the vertices in the center. And you could see where they're off and I'm just gonna snap to the, I'm gonna snap to the grid, this grid line, which it is. And I'm just gonna select my scale. I'm just gonna scale in. And when I do that, it moves all the vertices on top of each other. And you can't go past, so it doesn't matter. So you just keep going to the center. So now when I go into my perspective view again, everything is on top of each other. So let's just, I'll just fill in this hole just to make sure I get a good Boolean. You don't have to, I know, well, yeah, you kind of do. That's why I was a hesitant to just do a half, but, and I could manually do this without the boolean which is really it would be a pain in the butt so what would you what you would do is i would go to multi-cut and right where if i turn on my wireframe with this button here so i can see my wireframe on my objects i could just kind of eyeball where that goes uh where that intersects like kind of like that And then I could just do that all the way. I could do that all the way instead of Booleaning. So I could do that like this. And I could do, I could go back to the bottom here and I can do the same thing. And I'm just not, I'm gonna just start it where it's intersecting like that. So I have I have an end gone, but then I have a five-sided polygon here. So you could do either a Boolean 
or you could do it like this. So now, what? how can you combine these? You can't combine it. If I was to combine this and this together and merge the vertices here, what do you think is going to happen to the geometry? Is it good that we have faces inside our objects? Anyone? Not going to explode, is it? It's not going to explode, but it's going to look weird. So let's just, I'll just show you. So if I combine these now, they're still separate. So even when I smooth it, they're not really joined. But if I go and I just take this vertice, I snap it on top of that one. And I just drag select. So I have two vertices now. And if I go to, oh, not spacebar, sorry. If I go to uh, shift, right click, merge, and I'll just merge to center because they're on top of each other anyway. And I do the same thing with the other one, just snap it on top. There we go, drag select two. And I'm just gonna hit G to repeat the last command. Yep, so it merged. I'll do the same thing in the middle here. Just snap that over. I'll snap it on the other side too. Drag select. I have two vertices. I'm gonna hit G to merge those two verts together. I'm gonna to do the same thing here. I'm gonna to go to the bottom. I have two vertices here. You could just merge them, but then now you're, now when, if you merge them, watch what happens. You see how it moved? It's because it's, it's taking the average distance from this vertice to this vertice. And you notice, as I'm trying to zoom in really close, I'm kind of getting a clipping issue. So this is called my near camera clipping plane. To fix this so I can really zoom in to those two vertices, we can go to our perspective in our perspective view, we can go to view, select camera, and we can go to our attribute editor. And under the perspective shape, you have something called your near clipping plane and your far clipping plane. So let's, uh, the far clipping plane is if you have something massive in your shot, you'll notice that it starts getting clipped off. To fix that, we can increase this value. Usually a million is as high as you'll ever go. And for the near plane, I'll usually go either 0 0.001. That's as close. And then when you, you, we can zoom in as pretty close now. And again, our object is really small. Like I didn't scale up my reference image. So that's another issue. Because we're working so small, our clippy, clipping plane would normally work well if our size of our sword was a little bigger. So if I scaled my reference up a little bit, along with my geometry, I wouldn't have to change my clipping plane. But because I'm modeling something so small or at such a small size, I do need to uh, change my uh, near clipping plane. So I'm just gonna zoom in here just to show you. So we have our one object and it's intersecting our other object, which is good when we want to use Boolean. But when we just want to manually merge it, it, it kind of, it's hard because when you merge to center, or even if you use a normal merge, it kind of takes the difference and it'll put it in the middle. The problem with that is this, this face here that we built on our little, uh, the sword end is nice and straight and it's gonna smooth nicely and it's gonna smooth uh, nice and straight. It's not gonna wobble. It's not gonna have any indents. And if we merge to center, that's gonna change the, the angle of that face. And we wanna, we wanna keep that face nice and straight. So we're just gonna take the vertices from this object and we're gonna just snap it to the outer one. Same with the other one. And I'm just hitting V 
Remember? V to snap to point. And you just left click on top and you can just snap it to any vertice. Okay? And again, sorry, we're gonna have to drag select two vertices. Um, let's, I don't know if I did any other operations, so I'm just gonna go back to shift right click and just merge vertices to center. You could also, if I drag select these two, I can always go to edit mesh and merge to center. They're, they're right here. So now those are merged. Everything's nice, except we have a five, well, not really. We have a triangle with a single, with a, with a vertice right here. So technically this is a quad, but it's not really a nice quad. And this is, oh, sorry. Uh, I forgot to merge this one. Sorry, so let's just snap that here. Oh no, that should be that should be exactly where it is. Never mind. So now you notice we have the faces on the inside. This is what happens. You get you get weird stuff like this, and you get weird problems like this. It's because we shouldn't really have faces inside our objects. So if I deleted these faces right now, whoops, I selected this big one right here. So one, two, and just make sure those are the only ones we have selected. If I delete them, and we have the other ones from the other side, so we're gonna delete those two. So now it's nice and open. If we smooth it now, it's, it's sticking out nice and straight. It's still, uh, when we subdivide it, like when we go into smooth mode, when we hit three, it's we don't have any detail yet to reinforce it because we haven't reinforced our edges, but at least it's not popping in anymore. Okay. So what should we do here? We It is a quad, technically this is a quad now. We have one, two, three, four faces but it's such a weird angle to have it. It's weird to just have it right there. So what I'll do is I'll just go into my multi-cut tool and I'll just, you know, just draw it out, try to keep it as nice and even as I can. And I'll just join it down here to the vertice and it'll just stop. And when I drag in and over, it'll just stop when it hits that edge. And then I'll just enter to complete the operation. And when I go to three, you can see now we've got a little bit of reinforcement down there because we have the one edge and our edge is nice and clean. We still have triangles, but this is a hard surface. It doesn't matter if we have triangles, that's fine. Oh, so. What do we do next? Because our model is low res still, we can just keep going. So I'm just gonna delete these faces because in the end, when we do end up mirroring, wh where are these faces gonna be? They're gonna be on the inside and we don't want any faces in the, on the inside of our geometry, never. Delete those. So now our two objects are joined. Everything looks good. We could technically, we could just push this out, kind of match this. I don't know, it, aesthetically pleasing. It's up to you how you want it. You can push this in, something like that. It's really up to you how you want it to look. Maybe if we just did that, that looks nice. We'll just do that. So we can go in and we can, you can, you know, everybody wants to see what this looks like when it's nicely reinforced, but in the end, it's gonna be, you're gonna have too much geometry and we're still merging and joining uh, other pieces to it. So let's just not start going and, you know, adding subdivisions. And you can see, I'm trying to add, add an edge loop here and it only adds it on this polygon because 
it stops because A, this is technically a quad now, but that's not what we want. We're just gonna, you know, just keep going all the way around. I'm just gonna stop there. And if we hit smooth, so it's getting, it's getting sharper. The sword is still pretty low res. We don't have a lot of geometry here. We don't have any reinforcements on the tip. So we could technically just do that. And, oh, somebody left. I guess somebody's tired. So we could just add an edge loop here and just kind of put one at the bottom. This sword is symmetrical vertically and horizontally. So we could just, uh, we don't have to worry about the bottom, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the bottom anyway. So there you go. If we go to our side view, we can see that, you know, it's starting to take shape, but when we subdivide it, it does go past, it doesn't stay nice and sharp. So we will have to reinforce this section later. So basically what we did here with the joining these two, we will have to do with this one too now. Uh, I'm just gonna stop right there for a second. Does anybody have any questions or comments? I know I went uh, probably a little too fast. I don't know. Let me know. Um, Is there such a thing as too many subdivisions? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Mamuna was going to say, yeah, that went a little fast for me. So some of it kind of went over my head. Okay, no worries. I'll, I'll, I'll try to uh, tone it down, uh, like slow it down a little bit. Um, is there such a thing as uh, too much subdivisions? Yes, especially uh, early on in the process that you don't want to, uh, you don't want to get the mesh uh, too dense too early because, um, you know, it's, it's just more work to join things uh, if the mesh is too dense too early on. You don't, you don't want to overcomplicate it too early. Main Nuna's other comment was, is there a best way to do things rather than the multiple ways that you're sometimes showing us? Um, there, like the way I just did it is pretty much the, the best way you, you could do it, especially for such a tricky merging two, two tricky objects. Um, I, I try to, uh, you know, go through both ways, but technically the way I just did it would be the way I would do it in a production setting. I would just do it the way I, I, I just did. Okay, it's pretty no complex worries. for me. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's even though it's a, it's a simplified like it's a simple object, it's because you're you're transitioning from two different shapes, so it's hard. You gotta pretty much picture how the objects are gonna combine and where they're gonna combine, and then you also later on have to figure out uh, your reinforcement. So how we're going to keep this, this nice and pointy, this nice and pointy. So when we do uh, go into our sub D mode, the object doesn't turn into a squishy blob. So um, go ahead. Um, how do you know which edge to reinforce? And this time you reinforce by putting in more edge look like what did we do before, like last time? So uh, when I would reinforce this would be uh, when I'm finished merging these three pieces together, I would go back and I would start to reinforce my edges. And where should you reinforce is basically based on your uh, reference image. So. I'm just gonna go to the show tab under my side view here. And here we can turn off multiple things. We can turn off polygons, our image plane. 
So right now I'm just going to turn off the polygons. So you could see where we want our reinforcements. We want a, a sharp end. We should have a pointy end here and we should have a nice, everything is very linear. There's nothing really rounded too much. Okay. Even when you look at this, it's, it's curved a, a little bit. So we could add a little curve to it, but it's not, it's not really rounded. Okay. So, and you can see we have all our corners are sharp. So we know that we need to keep our corners nice and sharp. Even here we have, we have nice sharp corners and points. So we know that these areas here, when we go into sub D mode, it shouldn't like turn into like a, a, a rounded curve. It has to stay nice and sharp. And the way we do that is either we bevel or we manually insert extra edge loops to reinforce it. So it doesn't get too smooth. How so, many, sorry, go ahead. How many edge loops would we need on the ends to keep it like a, a, a sharp corner? Because I have two or three and it's still not doing it. Um, it doesn't like obviously fall apart, but it doesn't go sharp. Well, it, it, like I used to, I used to, one of my friends is like, he always coined this term, uh, micro bevel. So let's say I insert an edge loop on both ends. And when I, uh, let me just, let me just do the whole object here, just so it doesn't all tear apart on me and I'll show you. So basically you need, you need an edge loop on all your supporting faces. So you should always have an edge loop on either side of your supporting uh, face. So you're, you're, if, this is, if this is gonna be your corner, you always want a supporting edge on either side. So even if I delete this, so this edge is nice and sharp because I have my supporting edges on either side of the corner, but this one is soft because I only have one supporting edge on the corner and I don't have one here. As soon as I add one, now this, cor now this corner or edge this, uh, is nice and supported. And it all depends on how close you either insert the edge or uh, how far you put it. So now that I put these really close, you're gonna get a nice and tighter uh, supporting edge here. And it's gonna look nice and sharper. So if I just turn off my wireframe, okay. But you don't want it too sharp like this. You want a little curve in it. And that's why we, we try to use bevel a lot because bevel does give us that nice, uh, it kind of manually, what bevel does as an operator is it reinforces the, the, the corner edge and it takes the corner edge and, and it kind of averages out the distance between the two ends. So it creates a nice curve. So when you do uh, go into sub D mode, it, it creates like a nice curve. So usually back in the early days when we supported our edge, we would just put one there and one there and we would manually move our edge in to create uh, a bevel like this. And you'll see like once you start working, you start inserting edge loops and going into sub D mode. If your object is not keeping its shape, then we, we have an issue.
and you can always tell, you know, you can see the highlights. You can see the highlights on the edges. You, you know these edges are nice and they're not sharp like like 90 degrees perfect. There is a little bevel because you can see the highlight and the highlight is pretty strong. So it's up to you. It get, unless you have a specific like close up rendering of the sword, it, it you know, it's, it's up to, you have your artistic freedom to how sharp that edge should be. You know what I mean? So the next thing would be merging the next, uh, the next extrusion. So if we were to, or the next merge in between, so I'm just going to add an insert edge loop in the center here. Oh. And the only reason I want to show you this, if I use multi-cut and I insert an edge loop down the center, and if you go into your poly split three, now you have a value for every edge. This is what multi-cut does. It's not like insert edge loop tool where it inserts the edge loop just with one operation. The multi-cut insert edge loop, it basically, it's like manually drawing it instantly. That's why you have edge, uh, edge zero, one, two, three, four, five, all the way around. And you can see if I change this to 0.6, it, it moved just the one edge. Okay, so if you're gonna if you're gonna do this, if you're gonna use multi cut and then try to center, you could either select uh, drag select them all and just change them all to 0.5, or the easiest way is to just drag select everything. Make sure your gimbal is at the origin just by hitting X. Just make sure your gimbal is at the origin, and you can just scale it in the x direction make sure they're perfectly on top so there's a couple ways to do there's a couple ways to do everything in maya it's just whichever way you feel comfortable with and which way is uh more productive for you so the next thing we want to do is build that little joining piece in between right so Again, can't really, well, yeah, we can see, we can't really see where it's joining. I don't think there is uh, a little piece like that in here. Even, uh, even this, I feel like, Hmm. Maybe I changed the design a little bit. What do you guys think? Isn't that black just pixelating? I just figured, I figured with just three parts on top of each other. Yeah, yeah. I kind of went a little crazy with the design, I guess. Thinking there is a mini extrusion in between. Yeah, but it has the arrowhead at the beginning. The other one had second is slightly inside. And then the third one is slightly yeah, wide. Yeah, so you could, you, it could just be... It could just be like this, and everything is uh, on top of it like that, right? I was seeing it, just the three of them are inside of each other. Yeah. The middle one is the narrowest, and the arrowhead at the, at the beginning is slightly wider than the middle piece. That's how it looks. Yeah. Like. It's just for me, I, I still feel like, I still feel like maybe it wouldn't be this shape exactly. But I feel like you still need something to come out. It can't. It can't just be uh, a straight extrusion because uh, hmm. yeah, I guess it could be. It's just me taking interpreting the design a different way. So let's see. If we weren't, if it wasn't like this, it would just, uh, I would select all these. 
and you're saying it would just go I'm just going to keep that taper out there and just bring this in so it would be something like this yeah I mean it, everyone's got their way, own way of looking at it yeah for me it's like I wouldn't be able to see this edge if the, if it was just a straight extrusion. Like for me, seeing seeing this highlight mm -hmm. and seeing into it, and then it goes black, and then this is also um, it's got like a black shading in it. It kind of makes me feel like there's there's a little negative space in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I figured there was like, um, how do you describe it, like a, a wider piece between that middle piece and the outside one. So there was probably, yeah, yeah. So I, I definitely like what you're doing there with the plate. I definitely felt the same way. There's a small plate of some form there. Yeah. So we could. Uh, I'm just gonna isolate. Oh, just make this a little bigger. Let's see if I oh, turn so that off. Wouldn't it make sense just bullying all three of them into each other? Like just. You could, but then now you're gonna have to go. You're gonna have to zoom in and kind of merge them together. For me, I kind of want to do uh, uh, the two pieces together because if I had this piece here, uh, it's like it's getting in my way, trying to see inside and just trying to. Uh, and for me, I just want to keep my shape as simple as I can, as uh, without without overcomplicating it too much right now. Yeah. So 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 if I just uh, move this in just a little, let's just keep it like that. So I still have a little bit, maybe not as much. And I can also maybe the object is not as deep. So if I push this out, so the taper is closer to the surface, right? Tape, well, the taper there, you mean? Yeah, uh, not taper, sorry. I mean, the like how deep this piece is. So yeah, it's, not, it's not as deep. Yeah. Yeah. It's so making it, or it's so just maybe, like maybe something, maybe the, the shape is something like this, where it's just a car, a carving out. Yeah, oh, I was seeing it. Yeah, so I'm just gonna isolate this because the other piece is kind of. So, and what I could do is I could also just bring this. Uh, now we're gonna add a little more curve to the object. So if I just bring it out just a little bit. Same at the bottom. I'm just going to bring this out to kind of match the depth of this. Something like that. So something like that, right? This is more of what I guess it actually looked like, right? Yeah. Yeah, OK. I still want this shape. I don't feel like if I brought this in, that that's what it would look like. I don't know, it feels, I guess maybe that's what it would be like, but I don't know. If I kept doing this, we wouldn't be able to fit, um, we wouldn't be able to fit the, the handle part in it. It would yep. stick out. The outside one's much wider, like the third one. It's yeah, so this one, right? The so it, ta it tapers out more, so. Uh, let's see. So maybe maybe we can just have it straight, and then we can have the we can have this one. We can have this taper into that. So something like this, right? Yeah, that would work. Okay. So here, I'm just gonna. Let's just say I have these shapes right now. I'm just going to isolate select. So I want to join these together. I'm just going to roughly put in an edge loop where I see I, this should be. 
So I'm just gonna go uh, back to my side, my side view, I turned off my polygons. So just wanna put an edge loop straight across. So I'll just kind of rough it. I'm just gonna roughly put it in, put one there, put it down there. And to kind of get these to match, you could do the same thing when you're trying to uh, when you're trying to level things around the center where you have to scale it in. So what you could do is we could select these vertices, these vertices, and all of these. And A, you can, I don't really want to snap it here because this is the one I, I just put in. So I don't even know if this edge loop is at the right height. I'm just going to go all the way and I'm going to move my pivot. Do you guys remember how to move pivots? Oh, sorry. Sorry, Cam. Uh, allow multi-pin. My bad. Thanks, Philip. It's okay. It, it happened like 20 minutes ago now, oh. and it's because my huh? connection at home booted me out of Zoom. Okay, just just cut me off next time. Just 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 cut me off. Don't worry. I just made sure with the student. I'm chatting with her to see if she can see me in that. But the multi pin is ideal, but it's okay. It, no, it's but still, just you can cut me off anytime and just say, hey, you know, I yeah. lost my multi pin. So uh, uh, Marina is right. We get a, We can we can move our pivot by holding down D, and now our gimbal has changed, and now we can. We can move our pivot around. Okay. And if we want to snap our pivot to a vertice, what else do we have to hold down? Anyone? V. V, yes. So we're going to hold down D and V, and we're going to middle mouse click. Yeah, D and V to uh, and then middle mouse uh, snap to the vertices we want. So I know these vertices are what the original extrusion that I lined everything up to, and I'm just now going to scale everything in um, Y, and it's just going to bring it. Oh, it's just going to bring it up, so everything is nicely aligned. And I can do that to the bottom too. So I'll drag select those, these, and the two in there. I'm gonna hold down D and V. I'm gonna snap it to one of those vertices down there. And I'm just gonna scale it in that direction. And now if we go to our side view, everything is nice and aligned. So now that everything is nice and aligned, we can we can figure out what we want to do with the merging. So in our picture here, it really doesn't look like there's a gap. It kind of looks not like here. Maybe there is just it is just uh, merged into it. So the way we can do that is actually I'm going to pull this out a little bit. I'm going to pull these two out just a tad because I'm going to need a little lip here because it is it is pushed out a little bit. So Actually, I'm just going to double click. I'm going to select this edge. I'm just going to bring it out just a little bit. So, um, so what we can do here is basically we have to replicate all the edges from that we see here onto this object, and then we could just snap and merge. Now, if we Boolean, who wants to see 
the Boolean version of of merging these two together? Or do you want me to do it the way I did it earlier? For me, I feel like it's better to show you different uh, tools because then different you can use those tools later on without just you know saying oh I can just do it this way now if you come across a different model you can use a different tool set anyone do you want to see the boolean way can you have you shown a boolean tonight I don't think you have, have no you? I haven't yeah, I haven't it's been a long time since I've seen it so it'd be nice to see it one more time Okay. I know the only problem is, I remember correctly, using a bunch of vertices you have to fix after you do Boolean or something like that. Yeah. So if we, if we do the Boolean way, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to move my, I'm going to move the pivots for my objects to the center. And I'm just going to mirror them, okay? Because again, Boolean doesn't really work nicely on open faces. And I don't want to manually just fill in these faces. What I can do is I can just mirror the object, do my Boolean operation, and I can just delete the other half. So let's just, uh, we're going to mirror. Oops. We're going to mirror, and we're going to make sure our cut geometry is off and we're working in world and we are mirroring in the x axis so we're going to change that to x and for some reason when you change the operators here it only does it on the one it doesn't do it on the other even though it does have a poly mirror so that's easy we can just open up our history and we can just change it and make sure cut is off. So to change it to off, you can just type in zero and it'll change it to off there. So now when we smooth, yeah, everything. I just do a poly sub D. I just hit three just so I can see and make sure all my vertices welded when I mirrored my object. Okay. So I see that everything is welded. So the easiest thing to do now is I can just select all these vertices, just have them intersect. It doesn't matter how much they intersect, as long as they do. Select both my objects and just do a union. All right. So now I don't have any geometry inside, you can see and everything is merged. You can see my vertices didn't merge because they're not perfectly on top of each other. You can see they're on top of each other, but it still shows up too. So all we have to do now is just merge our objects. Do it again at the bottom. Whoop. Deselect the top one, just hit G to merge. And now we have to make one edge loop, two, three, four, right? So we're just going to go to multi-cut. Just going to roughly put that edge loop or that uh, edge loop right there. And one right here. And I'm just going to select those. going to merge it. Select this. Just hit G to repeat the command. And, and do the same down here. I don't know why it didn't. Oh, does anybody know why it didn't create the edge all the way to the end here? Because it's a quad with the vertex there. Yes, exactly. So I'm going to have to manually. Do that. And I can just delete this half. Uh, y is up. Yep, that's the side. So I'll just hit delete this. 
I got my one half. So now everything is merged. So now we can we can reinforce our edge. We can do a lot of stuff here that you know we want. Maybe you see how this. Maybe I want to aesthetically. Maybe I want to just bring in those two corners. I just want to create. Oh, my lights are flickering in my basement. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to save. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I don't want to lose it. Uh, sword. Where's sword? Right here. So sword underscore model underscore version one dot increment dot extension. I'm going to do an MA. I'm just going to save it. Okay, so there you go. One section done. So was that Boolean operation easy to understand? Did you guys get that? Mm, Maimuna says not so much. Not so much, okay. So Maimuna, so if we build a cube and let's say I duplicate that cube and I want to combine these two. So I want to union them. So I'm going to union them. And you can see when you do a Boolean, it naturally tries to connect the, the two pieces of geometry together. And you see here, it, it tried to create an edge from this vertice that wasn't connected to anything to the closest vertice that it could find. So it was the corner. And the only reason it's doing this, I think is, do we have a face on the inside? No, we don't. So you can see that only one side is joined. So you, we naturally have to finish off our, our uh, connections because we can't have, if I undo this, we can't have a face with one, two, three, four, five, six uh, sides. It's just not, it's not clean. Some, you know, if you didn't smooth the object, it will, it will render okay. But uh, typically uh, low geometry like this is not really uh, used for anything. So we do have to, clean up our geometry. So, so some, something like this. So when we Boolean, we were combining two objects together, but the topologies of those two objects could be really uh, greatly different. So we have to try to find a way to kind of uh, cleanly merge them. So let's say if we had this cylinder mixed in with the cube, obviously you wouldn't have such a low res cube. You know, even if we went down a bit, let's just say to eight faces. And if I did a union, you could see that it tries to merge the, it tries to somehow connect at least one edge from each object to the other. Is this the perfect way to join these two? No. So what I would do is I would actually delete these two edges and I would typically insert an edge here because I want to have something that welds to the center because when you look at the cylinder, it, has, it makes a, a cross or a plus Perfectly. So I want I, those are usually the first two ends that I want to combine. So if I do that, oh, sorry, didn't. I don't know. Uh, hold on. Why is ah? Uh, what's going on? I have a. I shouldn't have a face inside. Oh, it's this. You know why? Okay, I did something wrong here. You see how I deleted these two edges? So I deleted these two edges and then I thought, okay, I can start merging other edges together. 
And sometimes Maya goes a little crazy when you try to do stuff like that. So what you would have to normally do is before you delete these weird connections that it normally uh, does automatically when you try to Boolean, I would normally just try to manually create one edge, maybe even two, because you want to connect this surface to the cylinder somehow. And what if when I deleted this edge, when I deleted this edge and this, it it didn't have that connection piece between the two anymore. So that's why it looked it, it, it looked like it had two faces, one on the cylinder and one on the face. But now that I have these two in the right place, and if I insert an edge loop, and now it's going to let me connect it. So before you start deleting the automatic edges it makes, um, make a couple of your proper connections. So I'm just going to merge this all the way around. Right, and for these corners, I can just take them to the corner. So there you go. That's how you would join, let's say, a cylinder uh, to a lower res polygon. And you could always reinforce it. And then when you smooth, it looks it looks decent. So when you boolean, you always want to clean up the connecting uh, faces. It's just uh, it's a good workflow to have. Okay, Mamuna, does that make a little bit more sense? Yes, it's much clearer now. Okay. Um, you don't, you can have triangles, Marina. Uh, you don't, you, you can, you can have three, three sided faces, which is just a triangle. It's fine. But uh, in a, in a character, they kind of frown upon it because just because triangles sometimes give you um, weird pinches and, uh, uh, in your in, when the object is deforming, but in a hard surface model like a sword, you can have triangles. It's fine. So the next thing that um, uh, we can get into is merging the cylinder to our bottom plate. I know I said, okay, you don't have to, but you know what? We can, we can just do a Boolean, but uh, would we do a Boolean on such a dense uh, cylinder to such a low uh, poly mesh of the end of our sword here? No, right? It's just, it would just be too complicated. If I merge this and this, Oh, it's, uh, it's because it's opened. Okay, let me just uh, a mirror. Okay. So if I was to union these, now I have to somehow connect all these extra edges. And that means having to keep adding tons and tons of edges to my object all the way around. I have to do that. It's just, it's too time consuming to, to do something like that. Because in the end, we are going to be smoothing our object anyway. So we don't need such a dense cylinder. We can take it down and just from my experience personally, on an object that I'm never gonna see super close, I will always go eight. On a closer object, I will do 12. And I don't do weird 
in the in between numbers like odd numbers like 13 because I, I'm missing that straight line in my vertical and my horizontal so 13 you can see it I don't have a nice straight line so that's why I like to stay with even numbers so I have a nice straight vertical line and I have a nice uh, horizontal line so if I was to merge these two objects now and now it's easier for me to connect so obviously I have these edges here that were from this that go all the way up we can see what we can do here <clears throat> but for me the way I would do it I always I have my edge going across that's going to go right through my cylinder I'm going to make sure these are connected I'm going to make sure my center edge and you can see it actually did merge nice and perfectly because when I double clicked on the edge it actually selected all the way through if I do that with my side yes it did go all the way so if I smooth if I go to my sub D mode I can see that these edges actually did connect everything else didn't because there's nothing to connect to so the way I would normally do this now is I have to figure out where I'm going to get my edges from what am I going to do with this how am I going to connect it where am I going to connect everything to so now it's just uh, it's just a, like a little game you kind of have to figure out where you're going to connect everything to so I'm going to just take this edge I could leave this here and maybe insert another edge loop uh, right there and join it so I could do that I could also do that down here like this and you could see it actually sent the edges through because it did treat this as a quad but because it treated that as a quad I'm actually just going to delete these two little edges I have here and I'm just going to leave that as a triangle this little triangle here that's fine I don't need to to have this as a quad and I still get that nice sharp point right there and later if I really wanted to if I didn't want this to be straight I probably could select this and if I go to edit edge flow where it kind of changes the shape it does give me like a curve but it does screw up my geometry inside so we could figure that out later what we could do is we could just deselect these faces and we can kind of scale these out to kind of create a curve if that's what we want it's really it's really up to us how we want this shape we could also deselect these let's say we only selected these edges and we could scale these out and we could turn that into kind of like a curve something like that instead of nice and straight okay so it's up it's up to us later we can play around with that in a bit but right now I just want to work on joining my cylinder so as you can see I have these face our uh, edges now I'm going to join these to here but what do I do with this this edge going straight across I, I don't want to leave it just there um, what do you guys recommend anyone no okay 
most people, what I find they'll do is they'll go to the to the point here, and they'll go like this, and they'll just select these edges, and they will delete them, and they'll just leave it like this, and they'll join these uh, vertical ones somehow. But that's not what I do. What I like to do, and I'll show you why it pans out later, is I'll take from the corner here, I'm just going to go up, I'm going to go to the center, I'm going to go to somewhere roughly the same place. It doesn't matter. I'm going to delete half of it later anyway. So it's nice and symmetrical. And then I'm just going to delete these. I'm going to take these. I'm just going to connect them to here. And I'm just going to delete these little end pieces. So now when I delete those, if I smooth it, now I only have to contend with these down the center here. Right? And I really don't want to take these further. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to find a way to end these without taking it past all the way out here. So maybe I'll insert an edge loop somewhere in here. And I will just take these three edges and I will just merge them. And I will just select these and I'll just delete them. I'll do the same thing on the other end. And we have triangles but it's not really affecting us too much. We will, we can go back and fix this when we uh, reinforce this edge. If you want to reinforce this edge now, what we can do is, let's say, we select, that's, uh, that's another reason. We, I don't want to reinforce, I don't want to get into reinforcing right now because we're going to have to reinforce this whole thing. And I kind of just want to, leave this for a second until I get this whole section done here. So let's see. Okay, there we go. So the top is done. It's completely merged. I'm just going to delete this uh, end cap here. Just going to delete it. We lost somebody. That's okay. So I'm just going to take this pass over here. And you can see the bottom's not fixed. That's okay. I'm not going to repeat everything I'm doing to the bottom. I'm just going to delete it. I'm going to make sure my pivot's down there. And I'm just going to mirror in Y this time. So it flips. Turn off cut. We can see what's going on when I mirror is our merge threshold is too high. So I'm just going to set that to 0 0.01. And it's going to lower it so it doesn't select all these uh, vertices and merge them. Remember, the higher the threshold, the more that these are going to want to merge together. There you go. And another reason I did this is because I want to put an edge loop ring all the way around. And one thing you'll notice that I do have here is I have a five-sided face. This is not complete. So uh, we could we could have taken these and put them here and taken the one edge we could take the one edge all the way and we could do that. That's another way we can fix that problem, right? Or we could just go off to the side. But again, that means we'd have to delete this edge and then we'd get like a five-sided point on our edge. So that's not good. 
So you know what? I guess that does work out a little nicer. So let's just do that. We're going to move this. And we're going to do that. It's always, oops. It's always trial and error trying to figure out the best topology flow. And if you think you're going to model, if you think you're going to model an object and not have to uh, either tweak it or go back and fix it a little bit, what I'm doing here is I'm just going to delete because I, I tweaked that. I'm just going to delete half of it in both ends in the vertical and horizontal. I'm just going to make sure that everything is nice. Nice and mirrored on all the axes. There we go. So before I mirror everything, I want to reinforce this edge. So I could just select these like this, and I could go to bevel, change my segment to two, and lower my fraction down to like 0.1. And there you go, I have my bevel. I could also manually do that. I'll show you on the other end, but it does a nice job with the bevel here. So now I can, I can mirror in Y and you see how it's just trying to merge everything. Remember that threshold is, is always set too high. I don't understand why Maya hasn't figured out how to mirror things properly. I'm just going to hit G to mirror again. I'm just going to do it in X. And again, the threshold is too high. There you go. So we, we're starting to get our sword. So now what we can do is we can select all our perimeter edges. We're just going to select the outside edges. We're not going to select any of the inside ones. This is where we want to keep our, our hard edges, right? We don't want them to uh, curve too much. So there we go. Select this one. This is the most tedious part is you got to go through um, and select everything that you want to bevel. Okay. Oh, this bottom edge too. Again, I'm doing everything, but I get we, we only really have to do this on a quarter uh, of the of the object because it's mirrorable in vertical and horizontal. But I'm just showing the showing you this anyway. Let's see, what else do we have to bevel this edge here, this edge loop? Yes. So there we go. We've selected, I think, everything that we should bevel. And let's give it a try. Mesh tools, or sorry, edit mesh and bevel. We're going to increase our segments to two. Again, when I bevel, I try to use even numbers. And for the most part, when you do bevel, you will realize that you really only need um, you only really need uh, two segments. So if I smooth this, I to get I start to get a nice crisp edge, and it's a little too crisp for me. Uh, so let's just go to my bevel. Maybe change the fraction higher. And the thing with uh, Maya is, because we beveled everything together, we I, I went through and I selected all my edges. 
you're really limited to the space where you can bevel. That's why when we beveled such a big object like in here, 0.5 gave us such a big gap and we had to change it to 0.1. But you see up here, it's, it's, it's 0.5, but look how tight the bevel is. It's because we're working, because we're also beveling this inside edge and there's not much room to expand before it just, uh, it, it maxes out that that's why we kind of, you can try to just bevel certain edges uh, by itself. So if we undo, I'll just show you real quick. So instead of selecting all this and beveling it all together, we could just bevel a couple things at a time. And I'm just double clicking on my edges and it just completes the edge loop instead of manually trying to click all the way through. I just double click. Okay. And if we bevel this, and change it see now oh, i guess i guess it, it it's staying pretty tight because we don't have much space if we change it to two or sorry not point two uh two yeah we can get it a little bigger i don't know how the relativity works with beveling like certain objects one value will give you a different looking bevel compared to something else. I don't know the, the theory behind it. I just know that if the bevel looks a little different, you manually have to, you kind of try to match the size of your bevels by eye. That's what I've been doing for a long time. I don't know why it does that. Oh, did I? I beveled this edge by accident. I'm just going to delete that. Okay, there we go. So we also have to bevel the inside. And remember, when we look through the side here, if we turn off polygons, this is, uh, it is catching a highlight. So, You know, let's see, maybe this shape should be tapered more. Um, it's really, just gonna undo the bevel real quick. I just wanna see how I can just change this shape for a bit. Maybe bring it in a little bit more. Select these two outer ones. So I'm just selecting the outside and I'm just scaling them in to kind of create more of a, a rounded edge. So you guys can see it's not an exact science. It's not like, all right, I'm going to model this and it's going to look perfect on the first go. It really, it really never ends up working out like that, especially when you're just working off of one image. So yeah, that looks better than this. I guess we can, we can also take it to the extreme. We can just select the whole top and we can just bring in everything and we can bring the outside in. No. These faces, these vertices are sticking out. Just gonna bring those. Yeah, there we go. So maybe this shape is a little nicer than this. This is too too boxy. Something like that. And even this, like maybe this was too, it's not 
it's not a nice even edge all like uh, thickness all the way through maybe something like that and then when we uh, bevel this edge it won't look like it's going out and going in so it's just really there's a there's multiple ways to get to um, the same the same end and it's also your own interpretation of the the geometry I don't know why why did this edge get flat huh let's just bring that up a little bit sorry there we go I don't know what happened there Oh, what did I do here? I deleted the wrong face. Hold on. It's going to use a pen polygon. I'll fill in that face. And then I'll delete this weird face that's in here. There we go. And you can see when you get, when I just appended that face, I added this face in, but it's not, it says the vertices are all connected but the end is not, and yeah, so it's just the end didn't merge properly. So uh, merge to center, uh, and this one, I guess, no. So it did something weird, and sometimes you get this. So the way append works, so I appended from the top to the bottom, but it's, it's so weird, sometimes, um, Let's say, here, I'll show you real quick. If, uh, if I have a face, like a hole, and I just want to fill it in, there's a couple ways. I can just double click, and if there's no opening at, at the edges where you're going to mirror, like it's all contained, like a hole that's contained, you can always go to mesh, and you can fill hole. And when you smooth it, everything is nice and connected. And even when you uh, use the append polygon tool to fill it. This way, it's nice and filled. But sometimes when you're working on edges like this, where it was, uh, let's see, it was a weird, let's go back. I want to bring that bad face that I had there. Come on. There we go. So, ah, you could see what I tried to do. So I'm just gonna delete. So this face, it's weird. It's actually connected to the inside. And I was trying to connect this edge to this edge. So what I did was, and you can't, you can't really use fill hole because when you double click, it's, it's, it's connected to the open edge. So it, it also selects the hole, but it selects the whole entire opening. So you can't fill hole. It's just, your mesh is just gonna, it's just gonna look, look, it just won't work. You'll get the, you'll get the command, but it won't actually do anything. And this is why on the edges or on the borders where I'm mirroring, if I have something weird like this, I just use append. So when I appended, I did this, but you can see this thick line here and this thick edge, they're not actually connected. You could see. So when I hit enter and I go smooth, that's why it's doing this weird tearing because it's telling me it's not, it's connected in a weird way. So if I undo this, because this edge already belongs to this face. So you can't have another, you can't have another polygon sharing it. It won't let you when you're creating it. That's why it goes all funky. Um, so if I was to append, I would have to click on one, click on that side, and I would just, you see how it won't let, let me select the bottom? 
it won't let me select because it's either you're going to connect to this face or you're going to connect to this face. So what you kind of have to do is kind of just delete this. And if you to append, you would just append from across like that. And now it's going to be nice and clean and you're not going to get that weird stretching and you only have you have the proper amount of vertices you don't have any overlapping vertices okay let's see i'm also going to clean this mesh up because i continued these out i don't need these triangles here anymore i'm going to control delete those so what i want to do here is I think I'm manually just going to insert an edge loop right there. And let's see when I subdivide, does that look okay? That looks okay. I can also, because the distance between this edge and this edge is not that great, we don't really need to add a supporting edge on the inside and on this side, you can, but sometimes, you can always, you can also get away with, I'm just going to delete history. I have tons of history and it's going to kill my computer. So just make sure to delete your history once in a while. What you could do is just put an edge loop in the middle and hopefully that's enough to reinforce both sides. So, you know, the, the top here is still not supported. So we could just do this and then we'll get this weird thing here, which, you know, I don't normally like, but we could, we could also, one thing I do like to do is when you get edges this close together, sometimes when you render, you might get a black line, depending if it is on a curve. I kind of like to, um, let's say I'll just manually draw I like to space it out myself. So I'll manually just space it out myself. I'll delete that. And even this, I'll just kind of space it out myself and I'll just delete that just so they're not so close together. And I'm just kind of reinforcing these edges by myself just because the bevel, it just did something funky around here and I didn't, I just didn't like it. So it depends, you can always try beveling, but now I can bevel, I can bevel and reinforce myself by just depending on how far I put my supporting edge loop. And you're like, sir, but if I put a supporting edge loop here, it's only going to support the top and then I have to put one down here to support the side and then another one here. So the way I get around that is I'll do this, but what you can do is I want this support. I'm only supporting this edge and this edge. So I want this edge to follow the same pattern. So what I'll do is I'll select this this vertice, this vertice, and this vertice. So when I merge these together, it's just going to loop them around. You see? Uh, if I merge that, uh, no, I don't need this one. Let's just merge these three. And now, and merge these three. And what we will do is I'm going to delete this edge in here. I don't know. Wait, wait a second. What happened here? I have one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Oh, okay. So, so why did this, hold on, I merge. Okay, there we go. Now it's the same. 
I'm just gonna hold on. Ah, oh, I'm missing a supporting edge up here. So I could, I could add this one, but I know when I add this, it's gonna add it through the cylinder section. So let's see, what can I do here? You know how I have these edges here that come out and do nothing? They just kind of go down the center. So what I could do is I could take these right from the corner and I could push them really close to the end like this. And I can bring them really close to the edge and then I could fan them back out. So if I do that again on the other side, right from the corner, bring it in really close. And this way I don't have to add any more edge loops going around. I could just have those there. So if I just delete those now. Oh, sorry. I merged that to the wrong one, sorry. Here, here. And what I did was I merged it to this, but I wanted to merge it back to its original one. There we go. So I can delete those two. So I have my supporting edges, okay, all the way. Um, so when we let go of this, we can see this is supported, this is supported. Um, and now I need to basically, I need to weld all the, I need to weld these, I think it's only, uh, yeah, so just those two. See how I want it to go around? Yeah, sorry, I merged too many, so there we go. I have all these here that I have. I don't know. Let's see if I delete these, what happens? If I delete these. There we go. So basically what I did was I just manually made this supporting edge loop go around. Instead of keep going vertically and keep going horizontally, it's it's just going around now. So I was able to reduce my edge loop by by one. So there we go. And so if I want, sorry, my my son is outside the door. Matthew, can you go upstairs, please? Sorry, guys. Um, and basically. We can just, we could just bevel these now because these are a lot simpler. We don't have to manually do these. But again, yeah, we can just, we could just bevel these. Let's see what happens. We just bevel, there we go. Segment to two, increase it a little bit. Oh. I screwed up my selection. I forgot this edge. There we go. There is a little hiccup. It's because I'm starting to get a lot of edge loops going through. And you can see how close this one ended up being to my bevel. So it's kind of it's kind of screwing up my my bevels. So what you might want to do is before you bevel, just kind of space out, kind of space out um, your edges that are really close to the edge. So they're not they're not too close. Okay.
So I'm just gonna select the outer edges again. And just bevel one more time. Ah, that looks good. Go to two, uh, two. And now if we delete history and mirror. <laughs> Sorry guys. Um, so there we go. We've got, it's still a little smooth down here, but what we can do here is we could just, what I could do here is if I, I could just insert an edge loop. I can insert an edge loop all the way through. Just keep going. And let's see if I do this. So basically what I did, I, I just connected it to the end here. And I'm just taking my edge all the way up to here. And I'm just making a little triangle in the corner. So now you can see, now you can see that I have, I have uh, two uh, triangles here. So if I just selected these two and I deleted them, uh, actually, I have uh, an open here. Uh, let's see, will that affect anything? No, not on this side, no. Everything looks good. So I brought it, I brought it to here, but you see that we kind of want that supporting edge to go um, to all the way to the center. Shh, buddy, go upstairs. Come on. Okay, go upstairs, please. Um, so what we could do is we could bring it down to here. Let's say we brought it to here. And we can use the middle bevel to kind of support it. So let's see if we delete this. Let's see if we delete this edge in here to make it like a quad. How does that look? That looks good, right? Everybody, what do you guys think? It already looks better than mine. <laughs> no, don't worry. Um, let's turn on Polygon. So it's getting there. It's not perfect, but you know, I don't have a top view. So maybe, maybe this this is a little sharper, like uh, let's say pointier like this. It's really up to you. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like fault you for your own um, interpretation. Okay. But you can see like I have, I have uh, like, we have this edge loop that we inserted here to support this. And it ended here because this was our original triangle. So it stopped here to make a quad. But then what I did was I kind of went off on my own and I merged uh, the supporting edge to here. So it turned, it turned that quad because it was one, two, three, and then this part was four, and now it turned it into another triangle. So what you could do, to be honest, you could leave it. It's not really affecting the shape in any way. Or you could just take this edge and instead of it merging there, you can merge it up a little higher and just continue that around like that. Okay. Whoops. And the only reason it looks weird on this side is because I didn't do the supporting edge on this side. So you could have it like this too, see? 
Now you have a quad up here, you have a quad here, and it it's a little cleaner, but in the end, uh, when you're comparing this to this, did it really change the geometry, the look of the geometry too much? No, right? It still looks okay. And to me, when I go into sub D mode, this looks a little too clean, like too sharp. I could want it to look like, like this a little bit more. So it's not as, <clears throat> sorry, losing my voice here. Um, it does look a little too sharp, but that's okay. I don't mind. It's my interpretation of it. And it's weird, like, yeah, I guess, you know, it could be tapered and tapered, but from the image that we got, meh, I like it. And it's a good start. Uh, if we go back to our side, now this section, and it's already nine o'clock. So, um, what I could do, any questions up until now? I, we spent three hours just working on one little section. It's, uh, it's a little crazy, but, uh, you know, it's, it is a, it is, you know, it's, it looks like a simple piece, but then once you start merging everything together, it does get a little complicated. Um, yeah, I don't know, but, uh, any questions? Really? No questions, everybody? Okay, if there's no questions, um, what I'm going to do is I will make, uh, I don't think anybody else wants to stay around much longer. Uh, what I will do is I will record, I will keep recording and I will do the rest of the sword and I will put it up alongside this video. This, this section shouldn't be too bad because it's not as, um, let's see if I hide this. Yeah. You know, it's not as, um, it's not gonna be as complicated as this section it's just, it's going to be a little easier. And um, yeah, I'll try to, I'll try to do this um, on my own and record it for you guys. But I think I'm just going to stop it here. Three hours of talking nonstop is a little, a little much. And you can already see that I'm losing my voice. Um, is there any questions? Any questions? Come on, guys. It doesn't matter. I did have a quick question about the wire, the wire frame that we're seeing. Why are some of them kind of like, like over on the cylinder part? Why is some part of that like disjointed? Like uh, just off? Yeah. Okay. So I'll I'll tell you why in a second. So you you would think that if I was to insert an edge loop it would be perfectly straight, right? Yes. But what, uh, when you're modeling, it takes the contour of the shape from the closest edge over here. So you could see the contour of the shape is curved. So when you're inserting an edge loop, you can see how curved it is and the farther you get, it tries to straighten out. So an example of that would be, let's say I deleted these. Let's go into my side view. Because in the end, you wanna make, we're gonna make these perfectly straight uh, divisions, right? So let's say I would normally just 
you could either, what I did here is I used the cut tool. So how to do that is you go into your multi-cut and if you click outside of the mesh and you drag forward, you'll make a straight line through your geometry. Be careful because if you go through different sections, it will insert an edge right through everything. So basically you're cutting right through the mesh. And the way I made it nice and straight is if you hold down shift, it snaps it to, I think 15 degrees all the way. So that's how I got a nice, perfect straight edge. So now, now that I have this nice, perfect straight edge, sorry, let's go back to my side view here. If I inserted an edge loop, would it still be curved like it was over here or would it be nice and straight? It'll be nice and straight. So we can do that all the way. Here, once we get over here, we're gonna run into some trouble. But the way we can fix that is we can try to do a cut. Yeah, and even here, I think, yeah, as long as you're not going through, you should be fine. But let's say if you don't wanna use the cut tool, let's say you insert an edge loop, what we can do is if we go in our perspective, if we double click, sorry, we go into edge mode, double click, and if we hit R for scale, what do you think would happen if I just grab this RZ and I pushed it down to the center? What do you think would happen to all these edges? Wouldn't they kind of like meet in the, meet in the middle? No, meet in the middle. There you go. That's another way to straighten them out. And then when you, you can go back where you're on top of your image and you can just move it over and, and match your edge there. And there you go. Now, you, you guys obviously know how to do this part. You would just select all your faces. Whoops. Yeah, that, that part there, Philip, that's something Maimuna has said she has tried on her free time and wasn't exactly sure which technique you would have used. To oh, to, to create the indentations. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So the, the way I would do this is with just a simple extrude. So just shift, right click, extrude face, and I would just bring it in. I did that, but it, it didn't work out for me. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't, uh, maybe, did you hit maybe W? Yeah, you know, I, I did it, I did you, it, and, and, and it just, it came out a little wonky. I'm just wondering if you could just show us quickly how to do that. Okay, yeah, no worries. So if I select all these faces and you could, you could push them in, you could do it a, a several ways. So you could use the, you can use the transform tool, move them in, and then use the scale tool and scale it in like this. So, whoops, which is, which is, you know, it's effective, but it, very crude because now all these edges that stick out, you'll have to push them in. So the way I like to do it is I will select all these, all these faces right here. Whoops. Sorry. Just select all these faces. Just uh, do just do a poly extrude extrude face. It's the same as if you went up here. Uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, you went up here and or no, is it? Sorry. I always forget these two mixed up. Go to edit mesh and extrude. So there's several ways you can just scale in on the Z. If you, if you try to use the other directions, it does these weird, it does some weird things. So you got to make sure that you're using the right direction when you're extruding. Okay. And this is nice because it actually brings it in. Even though it tapers them out a little bit, you can always snap them, snap them yourself. If we undo and just go right back, you could also you also have this thickness. Whoops, it's very sensitive. So maybe just manually type in a value. Oh, that's uh, point one is going outward. So we want negative point 
one that's so that would be too much so we really gotta go uh small so let's just go 0 0.001 maybe nope Point, uh, negative point zero zero one there you go and you can always just change that to point five or maybe point two so depending on what you want and now once I have that what I would do is these little the polys sorry. end up smoothing you just take a look and see if they'll smooth so if they smooth, they'll smooth like this, which is, uh, which is okay, but in our image, they're a little sharper. So what I like to do is, and again. Yeah, it we, turned out okay though, the way you did it. Yeah, okay, that's good, awesome. But also, because we're only working on half the object, we need to delete these faces here, okay? We don't want these faces because a, if we kept these faces and we mirrored our object. Ah, that's awesome. Because we still have the history of the extrude, it actually mirrored and then ran the extrude properly. Okay, that's pretty cool. And it got rid of that face. That's pretty cool. I didn't know it could do that. But let's say... I did the extrude and I didn't have this. Happy accident. Yeah, it is a happy accident. So if we didn't have this extrude here anymore, let's say I deleted history and uh, let's see. actually, I still have that mirror there. Hold on. Let me just, there we go. So let's say I got rid of that extrude and now I mirrored in X. It still got rid of it. Oh, uh, I think it's because it merged the vertices. You could see there's some weirdness going on. It's pulling. There's something going on here. Yeah, you could see. Look, it it kept uh, it merged them, but it it kept the vertices. So, I guess it is a happy accident. I wonder if I change the tolerance to really low. If it brings it back, well, it doesn't. Okay. So again, if you forget to delete that face and you mirror and it does work, but you're getting stuff like this where you see some pulling, check your vertices because sometimes when you have a straight vertice on your polygon, it will do weird things like this. And when you have that, you can just delete it and it works out. And again, let's say I insert a, vert a straight vertice. Let's say I have one there and if I, smooth it you'll see you'll see it does something weird to the edges so if you see that it, when you're not in sub d mode and your edges are nice and straight and you go to sub d mode and it's doing this weird uh it's kind of like repelling the these two vertices are kind of repelling something in the middle so if you go to vertice mode always double check that you don't have a straight vertice and sometimes you guys will get that. Let's say I inserted a edge loop and I selected it. Let's say I only hit delete. I still have all those vertices there. And it'll look weird. It'll look like a, like a wave. So always make sure that when you're deleting an edge loop, you use control delete. That deletes everything, okay? And again, we we uh, we lowered uh, we sorry extruded this down by negative point two. So what we can do is we can go through and select. Okay, I'm sorry. Just wanted to clarify. I'm not sure if it was an interpreter error here too. Sure. So when you have um, when you see that weirdness, sorry, maybe when the saying I'm getting a little bit confused. So when you have that weirdness in the line, when it looks like it's it's bowing out or or coming yeah. in. Yeah. Um, you just delete what is it we're deleting exactly it's a vertice so sometimes we'll have like a like a stray vertice like this it's just there's no edge connected it's just like a little dot on the edge by itself yeah So 
we're just clarifying in the interpretation. Oh, no worries. Um, if you do see anything that you're not satisfied with because uh, it's, it's a little curved when you don't intend for it to be. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just when it's nice and like when you're looking in your, when you're not in something mode, you see your edges are nice and straight. And sometimes when you go to sub D and if something looks a little wonky, just make sure you check your component mode for your uh, component mode for ver vertex. So you can make sure that you don't have any stray vertices. So um, you can you can do the extrude on all of them at the same time too, if you use thickness. Oh, so I'm then, sorry, just clarifying. So when we see that we do have a stray vertex somewhere, yes. we just delete it, and that should straighten out the problem. That should fix it. Yes. Good, Philip. Thanks. Oh, nice. Okay, no worries. Um, so what I just did there was I selected all the faces, and I was able to just use one poly extrude to extrude in all those. I know some of my gaps are not perfectly even all the way. If you really wanted to, you could you could just make sure they're nice and even all the way. But um, uh, for me, meh, it's okay. Nothing in, in re the real world is perfectly even anyways. So, and again, I don't know if this is leather. Usually leather wouldn't be wrapped perfectly uh, even all the way straight like this. It would kind of loop on a, on a diagonal. So I figure this is kind of like a, a metal structure too. And even here, we could just select all the edges, all the outer edges, and we could just bevel them, just to give them a little sharper edge. And I will do this. I will take some more questions. Any questions while I'm doing this? I just had a thought, like this is probably the most uncomfy sword to hold. Like you hold it. Yeah, close to it's kind of even, even, even the grip, even the grip is made out of metal. It's not really, doesn't seem that uh, uh, really convenient or uh, comfy sword. Yeah, like you're saying to hold. So I beveled. Did I bevel? But you can see that the where is my bevel? Wow. So. If I, let's see, go back to bevel. It didn't even work. Why didn't it work? That is so weird. It should. See, if I do it to just these two, it will work. Yeah, that's so weird. All right. So you can do it one by one all the way. Uh, you guys know how to do this part. This is, it's okay. Just make sure you select bevel and just make sure there's a segment of two and select uh, the fraction, like how, how open or how closed you want the bevel. Obviously because these edges are two, uh, the two edges are really close together. You can only go as close as these two edges will go on top of each other, but we never want that anyway. We don't want edges sitting on top of each other. So you're really restricted to how much you can open, open that bevel out. Okay. 
I will do the video for the rest of the sword and we can, I'll post it up and I can dedicate at least an hour of next class to go over any questions from the modeling video for the rest of the sword uh, for your questions. Okay. Does that sound good? All right. Uh, when is the sword due again? Uh, well, I, I kind of wanted it, I think, this class, but I think everyone's having a little trouble with it. So uh, let me let me get the video up uh, hopefully by Friday night, and you guys can spend some time over the weekend looking at it, and hopefully you can follow along with it. Yeah. Uh, and. It is going to be one month like a potato next to this, so. <laughs> okay, no worries, no worries. <sighs> yeah, it's a it's it's a funky one. So, but I didn't. Uh, I guess merging all this is a little tedious. But what are you gonna do? I kind of I kind of felt. Even when I was looking at the image, I'm just going to extend this a little bit. Like, I was feeling like maybe it should be more like this without this supporting edge here, maybe. Like, there was more, it's, it wasn't such a, it wasn't such a flat edge. It's kind of, it's kind of like got like a double double edge like that. I don't know. Hmm. It's weird. It's definitely a funky sword, but yeah, it's interesting. Okay. Let's go save an increment. And that's it. Any other questions? Oh, clear? Okay. Good. All right. Awesome. Okay. So uh, go through it and I will try to do this again. You know, you can always change the shape. If you don't think this is what the sword should look like to you, if you feel like there's more of a gradual taper from the smaller section to the bigger section, by all means, go for it. Give it a try. Maybe if I continue the, when I continue the video, maybe I'll change this section, I'll record it and I'll see what I can do. You know, I don't know. I don't mind it being uh, a straight extrusion out. Maybe I do want it to taper a little bit, but that's, that's here, nor here or there. So I'll play with that. No worries. As long as it was <clears throat> helpful to a degree, I'm glad. And I did really want to show you guys the Boolean and stuff like that, which is a good, which is a, a really good tool. I use this a lot when I'm making objects. And it's just, just try to, when you Boolean, try to keep the topology flow very similar between your objects. Even though it could be a cube and a cylinder, just try to line up the edges so before you either do a union or a difference that, that you don't have to either add too much or change the, the, the shape too much to accommodate those uh, merging of edges. All right, guys, I'm just going to end it here. And I will go kill my kids because they bothered me during this recording. Oh, I shouldn't say that. I'll cut that out of the video. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Um, have a good night and good all night. the best. And uh, let me know how it turns out. And again, if you guys have problems, send me screenshots and I'll try to help you out on the way, uh, along the way.
Thank you. No problem. Cheers. Cheers, Thank guys. You. Have a good night. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.